on this very special Yom Kippur, uh, where we are once again in lockdown here in Israel, but we see the sovereignty of God working in that, dealing with lives, revealing Yeshua as the Lamb of God on this Yom Kippur. I'd like to share a perspective on the nations as in relationship to Israel as we move from Yom Kippur into Sukkot. Sukkot is the time for the nations. And I believe, number one, in the midst of these times of great shakings, the Lord wants us to remember that his heart is for the harvest and his heart is for the healing of Israel and for the nations. With all the difficulties associated with the COVID-19 crisis, it's easy to, to begin to come under that and we must rise above in worship and in prayer in those heavenly places where we're seated with Christ Jesus, with Yeshua. We must know, as he showed me in his series of visions in 2016, that great shakings would come upon the earth. But he said, know that in the midst of those shakings, I will bring forth water into the very driest places. I will expose darkness and bring forth light. I will bring forth harvest. So we must keep our eyes on what God is lovingly going to do out of his sovereignty during this time where the enemy is trying to, to steal, kill, and destroy, God will not let it go out of control. He will allow everything to be shaken so that only that which cannot be shaken will remain. And I believe we will see much more of the kingdom of God emerging here at Israel and in the nations. In the nations and here at Israel, we've been praying much according to Second Chronicles 7.14. Uh, I'm filming this on Sunday. Uh, Yom Kippur begins this evening. And this morning we were on a call with Messianic leaders around Israel confessing the sins of our nation before the Lord. And this is so right. In Second Chronicles 7, though, it's important for the nations to realize the context. If you start at verse 12, the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and he said, I have heard your prayer. I've chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut up the heavens that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people. So the context, that's verse 13, is a plague happening. And he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from my, their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. So it shows that the Father's heart is not endless judgment. The Father's heart is that he could bring healing to our lands. And then in verse 15, Second Chronicles 7, he says, now my eyes will be open." And my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place, the Temple Mount right here behind me. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. So even though the temple is not there now, his name is still in a special way upon this city and upon his holy hill. He says, my eyes and my heart will always be there. So when the nations align, with God's throne, the footstool of his throne in Jerusalem. When the nations align and say, we want you to be our king. We want the Lord God of the Bible, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to reign over us. He hears, he listens as we pray on behalf of our land. Point number two, as we've been confessing the sins of our nations before the Lord, I believe this is a moment, this is a time to believe for a global turning of the tide concerning abortion and the blood guilt that it has brought upon our nations. Toward the beginning of this COVID-19 crisis, I was, I was praying and worshiping here in Sukkot Alal, and I said, Father, help me to, to, to see part of what you see. And he showed me as he was seated on his throne, it, there, were, there were hundreds of thousands of little babies bathed in blood who were crying 
before his throne, their blood was crying out to him. And I knew this was the worldwide sin of abortion. And, and uh, it's interesting, there's a scripture, Patricia noticed this first of all in Isaiah 26, verses 20 and 21. It seems to be in many ways talking about this time in history because it says, come, my people, enter into your rooms, close your doors behind you, hide for a little while until the indignation, that word in Hebrew can also be translated punishment or curse, has run its course. For behold, the Lord is about to come out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will reveal, or the Hebrew can be translated uncover, the earth will uncover her bloodshed and no longer cover her slain. So what do we do if the earth is no longer covering the blood guilt of these innocent babies who have been killed in all of our nations, almost all of our nations. And, and the earth is no longer covering. We need another covering. And today, on the Day of Atonement, we thank the Lord that Yeshua, the spotless Lamb of God, Jesus, the holy spotless Lamb of God, has provided he is our atonement. He is our covering. He is the one whose blood can cover over that which has been uncovered during the time of this crisis. This innocent blood of babies crying out, crying out, opening a door, a uh, legal access to the spirit of death. But I believe today, as we come to the end of these 10 days of awe, I believe on this day of atonement, we can claim as the intercessors, the remnant intercessors in the nations, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24. It says, you have come to Jesus, to Yeshua, the mediator of the new covenant. Now that new covenant was already spoken of in Jeremiah. It was promised first of all to Israel, to the Jewish people. And then in the New Testament, we find that as we are grafted in, that great promise goes out to the nations that we can be part of the new covenant, which is written in his blood. And it says that blood of sprinkling speaks of better things. It speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Abel, obviously, was the first innocent victim of murder. And so... The, he's the picture of all innocent blood that cries out, cries out for justice. But God, in his great mercies, has provided a way that we in Israel, which we did this morning on a call with the Messianic leaders, and that we in the nations can confess this terrible sin of abortion before the Lord. Now, as I'm sharing this uh, 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 right now, we had uh, just watched yesterday evening something called The Return in the United States. It was uh, a huge crowd that gathered in Washington, D.C. And part of what they cried out for is over and over was for God to forgive America for the, not only the sin of abortion, but the sin of exporting abortion to the nations. And as an American, I join in that today. And I say, God, please forgive, have mercy upon America that not only were the, 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 all these babies aborted, but America promoted abortion, exported abortion to the nations of the world. And it influenced here in Israel. So we ask forgiveness, Lord. I ask forgiveness on behalf of America as an American citizen. I ask forgiveness on behalf of Israel as one who has lived here more than 20 years and has Israeli grandchildren in this land. God, we ask and we believe you, Lord, according to your great mercies, O oh God. We thank you that we come to a throat of grace. We thank you that your blood speaks a better thing, a stronger thing than the blood of Abel and the blood of the innocent victims and the blood of all these innocent babies whose lives were cut short through abortion. But we thank you today, Lord. We believe, we believe and we agree together. Let there be a turning of the tide 
in the nations concerning abortion. Lord, let there be a turning of the tide. We thank you yesterday, as, as on Saturday, as, the, uh, as they were repenting and the return uh, gathering in Washington, D.C., that just as that call came to an end, within the, of, within the hour, President Trump was announcing the appointment of a Supreme Court judge for her pro-life views and for the sanctity of life. And so, Father, we pray for uh, the miracle of her confirmation, not just as an American. I pray this for the nations, that this Supreme Court justice, who could be the one that tips the balance on the Supreme Court to overthrow some of the evil rulings that have taken place concerning abortion, even as the Supreme Court begins to tip, as the balance begins to tip in America, let the balance begin to tip in the nations. Let the bowls that have been filled up of weeping and repentance over this sin of abortion, let those bowls be filled up. Lord, I believe you are saying this is the time for those bowls to tip over and for there to be a turning of the tide concerning this shedding of innocent blood through abortion throughout the world, that there may be a great revelation in the nations of the sanctity of life, that you are the giver of life, and we are not to take a life that you have given. Now, number three, I believe we are still in a window of mercy for the shifting of nations towards becoming sheep nations. Now, we, we, there's been a lot of teaching, so I'm not going to go into that. But we know in Matthew 25 that the nations will be judged. That's separate from the judgment of individuals, which is bla based upon our, our uh, repentance and turning to the Lord and receiving the forgiveness found in the blood of the Lamb for us individually. But he will also judge the nations and they will be separated into sheep nations and goat nations. And, and part of that is their treatment of the poor and of the oppressed. But part of that is also their treatment of Israel and of the Jewish people. Because there in Matthew 25, he says, If you've done this for the least of these, my brothers, you have done it for me. If you've done it against the least of these brothers, you have done it against me. And the only ancient people to call themselves brothers, according to Bible scholars and archaeologists and historians, the only ancient people of that time to call each other brothers were the Jewish people. So through that, Jesus, Yeshua, is saying the nations will be judged by their treatment of the Jewish people. That, of course, is confirmed in Joel chapter 3 when he talks about judgment of the nations and it being very tied in to things such as trying to divide up the land or, or, or maltreatment of the Jewish people. So we believe this is a time of mercy where God wants to, to reveal his love for the Jewish people and for Israel to all nations and that nations would shift and turn and become sheep nations and I believe no nation is hopeless. I believe this is the season to press in for the exposure and rooting out of systems of evil. And in 2019, many of you are aware of a vision the Lord gave me of shifting nations into sheep nations that where the intercessors changed, they began to have an effect upon their nations. Again, the bowls began to fill up and nations that looked like chess pieces, like the, the horse or the knight on a, on a chess board, uh, were representing governments of nations in this vision. But as the intercessors began to cry out, according to Second Chronicles 7.14, and as they began to proclaim and to prophesy to their nation and to their nation's government and their nation's leaders, many, many nations began to shift and to change. And I felt the Lord said, I am extending a season of mercy for the nations to change, and no nation is hopeless. As we enter into this new season of 5081, 
I believe the Lord has confirmed again in my heart that this window is still open. We are in a window of mercy. It will be more difficult whenever this window closes to see nations change. But we are in a place now where through humbling ourselves, repenting, turning from our wicked ways, seeking his face and proclaiming the words that God puts in our mouth over the nations, nations can and will be shifted during this season. This is speeding up. I believe there's an acceleration of the shifting and realignment of nations. I believe the Lord said in this vision, this is a time when nations can more easily be turned around. So let's believe the Lord for that. There was another vision related to this that some of you may have heard, uh, but I feel it's important in this season. In May 2018, he showed me a vision of spider webs, of evil systems of control, and that there were many evil leaders who were like spiders. And they were, others were, were leaders who were not evil, but they were captured in this web and blinded by other spiders. And I felt the Lord showed me the Lion of Judah arising and just tearing apart many, many webs, many, many systems of evil in nations where the intercessors were crying out to him for his mercy upon their nation. And as he began to tear apart these spider webs, I saw then the intercessors would take the blood of Jesus, the blood of the lamb. It was like angels were coming to us with bowls of this blood and saying, use the blood of the lamb. And on this day of atonement, it's so important we realize the power of the blood of the lamb. Just one drop of the blood of the lamb in this vision, when it was applied to a spider, that spider representing corrupt, evil leaders of evil systems, that spider either began, had to repent and turn, or God began removing that spider in nation after nation after nation. And some of the nations even surprised me uh, that I saw. There were nations here in the Middle East that began to shift into sheep nations. So I believe this is a time, a window of mercy. No nation is hopeless. Now, as we took that vision about the spider webs and the spiders, about the power of the lion of Judah tearing apart these spider webs and the blood of the lamb dealing with evil leaders to either repent and turn to the Lord or many of them to be removed from power, we began to proclaim that on April 12th, 2000, I'm sorry, April 11th, 2019, we were with our dear friends in Carmel Assembly, uh, Mount Carmel, where Elijah called down fire from heaven and built an altar, restored the altar of intercession for worship and intercession in Israel. And we began to proclaim, I shared about this vision, we began to proclaim it over many nations that were represented in the room, that the light of Judah would arise and tear apart systems of evil, that the blood of the lamb would remove evil spiders, would change their heart or remove them. And in that Carmel assembly, they have a ministry to refugees from Sudan. And these dear Sudanese were there present on Mount Carmel on the 11th of April as we proclaimed the power of the blood of the lamb to take out evil, to remove evil rulers. The very next day, you see it on the slide here, the New York Times headline read on April 11th, 2019, Sudan's spider is finally cast out of his web. In the next slide, it says the New York Times said subheadline on April 12th, this is the very next day, said Al-Bashir, Sudan's spider is finally cast out of his web. Now, to put that in context, this Al-Bashir was an evil dictator who had ruled Sudan for 30 years. He had turned Sudan 
into probably the second nation in the world after Iran in terms of the training and exporting of terrorism. And through all of this, their, their funds had gone into terrorism and Islamic terrorism and these kinds of things, and the people were in grinding poverty. Many Christians were being persecuted and killed and actually were able to form a new nation called South Sudan where they fled. But this evil dictator, they had tried in coup after coup, but they'd never been able to overthrow him. But when the intercessors proclaimed together, the Lion of Judah is arising to tear apart evil spider webs, systems of evil, and the blood of the Lamb is being applied to, to, to cause evil leaders to repent or to be removed from power. As you see in this headline, the very next day, they even used the words we had used, Sudan's spider is finally cast out of his web. Now, if, that could, if there could be hope for Sudan, I believe there could be hope for every nation. And I pray that hope will arise in our hearts that during this time of shifting, it's not too late for your nation. It's not too late. I know uh, as one of American background, I, I have had many times where I felt like, Lord, it just seems too late. But the Lord would say, no, there's a window of mercy. Just practice my word. Humble yourself. Pray. Seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. Call out for mercy upon the land and I can shift the land. And so we need to uh, realize this is a special time for the shifting of nations. Now, some of you know that the Lord allowed us in August of 2019 to go and meet with President Museveni in Uganda, where intercessors have seen such an amazing turnaround over the years in their nation. There has, there's such a move of God in Uganda right now. And this President Museveni... Uh, is an evangelical Christian. And we felt the Lord told us we were to share with him a vision that God had given to one of our leaders here in Sukkotalau uh, one evening during worship where he saw Uganda like a key. And when it turned on the, key, on the teeth of the key were written the names of other African nations. Other African nations began to change. So you see there the photos as Patricia and I were able to meet with him. And we felt the Lord said to give him a large, old, about a hundred year old key from the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, the kind of keys that are used to unlock big gates in the old city of Jerusalem here behind me. On this plaque underneath the key was written, this placard was presented to His Excellency President Museveni to honor his role as a key to help Uganda and other African nations come under the blessings of the covenant of Abraham by blessing Israel. And we told him, you have done so many good things for this country. You, you helped drive out an evil, oppressive Islamic terrorist leader, Idi Amin. You've been a father to the country, but we believe God wants to make you a father to many nations. We believe God wants to, you to begin to turn that key to help other nations of Africa to come under the blessings of covenant with Abraham by blessing Israel. Well, in February 2020, President Museveni arranged a secret meeting for Prime Minister Netanyahu to meet General Burhan of Sudan. So Sudan not, was not only uh, set free from this spider's web and the evil spider, we kept praying, Lord, keep shifting Sudan. Lord, help it not to just come under another spider. Help it not just to develop another spider's web, but help Sudan to move in, in a godly direction, to become a sheep nation. And so we were amazed when we heard about this secret meeting that actually it was President Museveni of Uganda who arranged this highly secretive meeting so that Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel and General Burhan, the interim leader of Sudan, could meet together. Now we keep praying, and I encourage you to agree with us. Lord, we agree together right now for Sudan that it will keep moving, that it will keep moving in the direction of a sheep nation, that Uganda will keep moving in the direction of a sheep nation. 
that it will be a key for many other African nations. But Father, even as we believe this in Africa, we believe you do do the same kinds of things in Asia, in Europe, in South America, in North America. Lord, raise up leaders at this time who will be used of you to help shift their nations toward biblical values, to shift their nations toward a biblical alignment with Jerusalem and with Israel. We thank you, Lord, for things we're hearing even this week of of other nations that may join soon in normalizing relationship with Israel. And Father, we pray for the shifting of many, many nations, even as we at Israel pray for the shifting of Israel, that Israel will, in a sense, be a sheep nation uh, that listens to your voice and that obeys you and follows your voice. Now, the last, uh, our last major thing I want to share in number four, the Lord wants to give us hope for our nations to become part of these highways of light that are forming towards Zion toward Jerusalem. Now, when I'm talking about Zion, we're, we're not just talking about a political alignment. It is that. But beyond that, it's a spiritual alignment of covenanting with God's word and God's purposes for Jerusalem and for Israel. And God says he will bless those nations that bless Abraham and his seed. And as that vision went on, you'll see here in the slide... Uh, There was a continuation, in the continuation of that vision of the spider webs and of the spiders being removed in May 2018, I felt the Lord said, this is a season for the realignment of nations. I saw that angels were sent from his throne to lay highways of light that were aligning many with the lamb and with his throne. From a higher view, it looked almost like a satellite map that shows lights uh, of the more developed nations at night. You see their highways uh, lit up. You, you, You see the lights of the houses. And these highways of light, as they began to form in the nations, I saw that they came through the David's Heart Bridge. There's a photo here on the slide. When you come into Jerusalem, when you drive into Jerusalem, and we hope Soon it will be open again for you to come here. But when you drive into Jerusalem, you see this great, beautiful white bridge that is called the David's Harp Bridge. And I believe it's a, 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 a clear symbol of the fact that Jerusalem is called to be a praise in the midst of the earth. God said, I have appointed watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem who will cry out day and night until you make Jerusalem a praise in the midst of the earth. And so these highways of light, uh, uh, they, you, look, you see it's almost like the opposite of a spider's web. There, there are lines. It's almost like a web, but it's a web. It's lines of blessing. It, it's alignments of blessing. New alignments of nations are forming at this time in the United Nations, and in other forums. And I even saw in this vision in 2018, May 2018, I wrote down, I even saw highways of light develop in Egypt, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, and Bahrain. So I believe that it is God who is behind a turning that is beginning to happen. We need to keep praying for these nations that it be a full turning, but something is shifting in places like, uh, like United Arab Emirates and Bahrain that have just normalized relations, relationship with Israel. This is not just a cold peace uh, as Israel experienced in the previous peace treaties with Egypt and Jordan. Jordan, it seems to be a warm peace. In other words, desiring relationship, desiring a highway of commerce and, and of, of back and forth from Israel, tourism and commerce and scientific development between Israel with the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain. So keep praying. These very unlikely nations, ones most of us would never have had hope for, the Lord is shifting them. Uh, I've been on calls in, in these last few weeks 
with believers from places like Saudi Arabia. Some were even Muslim background believers. And they said God is beginning to move in that land. So let's not forget these nations that we have often written off. As we pray for our own nations, let's pray for these nations of the Middle East and North Africa, that there will be many sheep nations emerging even here in the Middle East. Now, I would like to close by saying this is a season for the leaders of the earth to come as a first fruits to worship the Lord in Jerusalem. Uh, about a year ago, we had some African leaders who were going to share here at Sukkot Lab. When we walked into the room, we sat down, but for some reason we felt we should sit in the second row, uh, even, even as leaders, that we should be in the second row. We just sat there, and in walked three traditional African kings. They are rulers, royal kings uh, of great lineage who oversee huge areas of the, of the modern nation state of Nigeria. But I believe God, when he speaks of kings and speaks of sheep, I think it's not necessarily only modern nation states. I believe it's ethnic groups. It's groupings of, uh, that are, are under traditional kings. And these three traditional kings came into the room, very stately, very noble. And the first thing they did was come to that front row, kneel down, took off their crowns and laid down their crowns before the Lord in worship. And I was just, I, we were moved to tears. It was just such a picture, such a first fruits of what God said he would do. And we believe this is the time in Isaiah 60. He said, during a time when thick darkness is over the nations, I will arise upon you, Jerusalem. He's speaking to Jerusalem in the context. He says, my light will shine upon you. My, my glory will rise and shine upon you. And he says, Na kings and nations will come to the brightness of your dawning. So this is a time also for somehow the lights to be turned up here in Jerusalem, the light of the Lord, for the Lord to reveal more of his glory, more of his light, to reveal himself into a far greater number of people here in Israel. But at the same time, it's a time for us to pray for the leaders of our nations that they might humble themselves before the Lord. In these days of great shakings, many leaders don't know what to do. Let's pray that they will have a revelation of the wisdom of God, of the fear of the Lord, and that like these kings, they will take off their crowns, lay them before him, and humble themselves and say, God, we cry out to you for the answers for our nations. God, we cry out to you for the answers for the people we serve as a king or a president or a prime minister. God, we cry out for your mercy. We cry out for your blessing. We cry out for your grace. We cry out for the healing of our lands. So this is a season to believe the Lord, to change and to shift the hearts of leaders. Let's pray together for this. Father, we thank you that you are sovereign above it all. <laughs> we thank you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, when, when we kind of get under the, the circumstances of, of the lockdowns and all the various things. Help us rise above it in worship. Help us lay down our own crowns before you. And Lord, in your mercy, as you promised in your word, use our prayers to help tip bowls from being bowls of judgment into becoming bowls of blessing. In nation after nation, may we see more healing of the nations, more shifting of the nations during this window of mercy in the name of Yeshua. Colossians 3.3 3 says that our lives are hidden with Christ in God. It says, you have died, but your life is hidden with Christ in God. Thank you, Lord, that our lives are hidden. Our lives are hidden. Let people see you, Yeshua, instead of us, Lord. Let your glory, let your glory shine in us. Father, thank you 
that you have provided a covering. You have provided a covering so that we can be protected and that the world will see Yeshua. The world will see your glory. Yom Kippur means the day of covering. Yom means day in English and Kippur in Hebrew. In English, it means covering. So, Father, on this Yom Kippur, we thank you that you have covered us with your blood. You have covered us with your glory. Our lives are not our own. We have died to ourselves, and we are hidden with Yeshua HaMashiach in God. Hallelujah. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the living God. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the living God. Let the wind
Adonai. 